right, welcome back to the Eastern Cape. And Tata Dam is the destination of our broadcast. And it is so beautiful here this morning. Not only the views, but also the way everybody's dressing up for the occasion and coming in, I think, what for me, I, I, I absolutely love the Eastern Cape and the fashion coming out of the Eastern Cape. I think it's just magnificent. And the beadwork, the beadwork is phenomenal. Well, with me now, I've got our Minister of Tourism who's holding all the beads that you could ask for, Derek Honeycomb. You've got a, a peace pipe here with you. This is beautiful. It's really beautiful, and uh, but I want to assure your viewers that I've not been smoking it. I'm just holding it, not smoking it. <laughs> That's unfortunate, I have to tell you, because, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the legalities of what you're smoking a bit later, a few years from now. But, Minister, great place to be celebrating this year, World Tourism Day. And, I mean, we talk about the fact that the rich history, the people that we've been born out of the Eastern Cape. I mean, this is, this is beautiful, isn't it? It's stunningly beautiful. It's extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, the interesting thing is none of us have heard of Mtata Dam. I'm here for the first time, as you are, I yeah. believe. Uh, and it, it's, it's exquisite. It's so beautiful. But what I like about this choice of setting is that, uh, you know, it's right next to Mtata. It's not one of the spectacular natural beauty settings of the Eastern Cape, of which they have so many. It's just a dam near the city that people can come and relax do recreational stuff and I think that's what we are kind of missing in South Africa is more places where more South Africans can just go and enjoy themselves and this is one of them and we need to showcase the less known places and this is what uh, Tourism Day is all about is to showcase our many many gems in our country diverse all over the country Eastern Cape has everything in it everything that a traveler could possibly look for is to be found in the Eastern Cape. And that's a fact because, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're looking for, you can find it here. And yet, when we were talking to the MEC, they say they're still struggling and that as much as there is to offer, they're not attracting the numbers that they'd like to. How are we going to increase this? Yes, I heard the MEC this morning and I think he's absolutely right. The, the first thing is recognize the potential, recognize the value and then build on it. Do the necessaries in order to extract full value out of tourism. And I think that's where they are at the moment. So it's what we're talking about here is untapped potential. And untapped potential that with a few, um, few measures in place like infrastructure development in certain cases. The Wild Coast, Leanne, for example just has to be one of the most ex exquisite coastlines in the world. Pristine and unique in many different ways. You know, you've got these absolutely um, pristine and hidden coves, but on the other hand, you've got stretches of beach where you'll find animals, um, cattle lying on the beach, which you just don't find anywhere else in the world. So you've got this combination of, of a, a cultural setting, of a kind of an indigenous, traditional cultural setting next to the most exquisite, rugged coastline, if you like, with beautiful beaches tucked in between. Yeah. I want to get on to... The problem, sorry, sorry, what I wanted to say is, I mean, you have it and that's your, your natural asset, but the infrastructure is, is not where it should yeah. be, so it's, access is quite difficult. So that becomes one of our big challenges, is to ensure that what we have to offer is available to tourists by improving access and the Eastern Cape is very well aware of that. There are parts of the Eastern Cape, by the way, which are really well developed. If you, if you start from Tsitsikama along the extension of the garden route, there, where we don't have uh, infrastructure problems, but there are other, other areas with massive tourism potential where a bit of infrastructure investment will bring the tourists there. Well, that's what's important, infrastructure and also air travel, because that's another, another big issue. But, Minister, let's talk about visa regulations now, because this yes. is obviously the theme of the week. We've heard big announcements, some changes that have come. Are you satisfied? Is this what you've been wanting? Because I know that this has been a real big bugbear for you. I know there seems to be a bit of confusion out there, but this is what we've been wanting. This is what I, you know, I discussed with the industry back in 2015, when the impact of the visa regulations, and in particular the requirements for children traveling with single parents or traveling alone, was having quite a devastating impact on family travel. Um, and so we, we had a set of negotiations and we came to agreements on what needed to be put in place to find the balance between combating child trafficking, because we must take it seriously, and, and not uh, discouraging people from visiting South Africa. So making a, creating a more uh, visitor-friendly visa regime, yes, I am very satisfied. I think what the industry is saying, however, is that it, it will only kick in 
once the changes are gazetted. So I think they're waiting in a bit of anxious anticipation for the gazetting of the new regulations, which will no longer require uh, single mothers with their young children to get uh, affidavits from the other parent who may not even be alive. And so a whole host of measures I have now will go as a result of these changed regulations. And so all it, all it amounts to, Leanne, is that uh, you, as a, as a traveler from the UK or the USA to South Africa, traveling with your young daughter, will be advised to be able to prove the relationship between yourself and the child that you're traveling with, as other countries do. So we're bringing it in line with many other countries. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really to be welcomed. I think most of the industry welcomes it, but they're a bit cautiously optimistic. We think it's not only the measures affecting children travel, by the way. A whole host of countries are going to enjoy visa waivers. So they won't need visas at all. Most of the Middle Eastern countries, North African countries, some West African countries, the negotiations are happening. And the end result is that there'll be visa waivers as there was a visa waiver for, for uh, Russia last year. So, you know, these things are coming. So, uh, you know, we, we are fully aware, as is the Minister of Home Affairs, of the massive economic uh, potential of the tourism sector and that we need to make it easier for people to come to South Africa, including business people, by the way. And that's, and that's a big thing as well because you get those working visas where they five-year working visa that makes it much easier for them to access. All of these things help the numbers, they help the, they help the figures. What are, you, what are you hoping to achieve? I mean, when we look at where we're sitting now and to improve those figures, with some of these changes, with I imagine you're going to be embarking on massive roadshows to educate and to try and undo a little bit of the harm that may have been caused by some of these restrictions and tourists being turned away. How are you hoping and what are you hoping to get that number to? Well, to get the numbers, I mean, of course, we need to have a sort of a, a aggressive marketing, if you like. Every country markets their own countries. We've got such a marketable product. So, uh, so that goes on, if you like. But you're quite right. Having a strong messaging. Uh, incidentally, it's not only the visa messaging. One thing that impacted on the reduced declining numbers last year was not the visas. Because in 2016, we saw good increase uh, very good increase. 2017 we saw a decline. It was largely as a result of the drought in Cape Town. Yes. Cape Town happens to be one of our big hotspots, our yes. big tourism attractions, and we had a very significant declines as a result of something that was completely out of our hands. Yeah. Yeah. So the messaging is the drought is over. Even though we are still uh, advising people to be water responsible and do the right things, etc., there's no more crisis in Cape Town as far as the drought is concerned. And now, making it easier for people to get a visa to come to South Africa or to travel with their children, uh, we believe, and combined, as I heard you say early on, with a favorable exchange rate, it's all stations go. We believe that towards the end of the year, we're going to see a good turnaround. And 2019, I would like to say, Leanne, is going to be a, a bumper year for tourism in South Africa. Yeah. We hope so. We really do. As you say, there's so much to market. We do. Okay, let's just talk very quickly about the theme for World Tourism Day. I haven't really touched much on it. It's tourism and the digital transformation. Um, and South Africa has adopted the theme inclusive and quality growth of the tourism sector through digital transformation. So everything's digital, 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 fourth industrial revolution, etc., etc. But what does it really mean? It really means that we, we've got to take full advantage of the digital opportunities. I mean, here we are speaking to millions of people right now, you and I, although it looks like it's just you and me. <laughs> there are millions of people out there digitally that we are speaking to. But meanwhile, uh, you probably have a telephone in your pocket or somewhere over here, so do I. So the mo mobile phones become the main means of communication and you can pack any number of, of valuable uh, applications on your visa, f on your smartphone. And, and so what does it mean? It means that you no longer have to go physically to a travel agent to, find, to get brochures and to find out where can we go to. It's all on your phone. When you go to a place like this, you take photographs from your phone and you transmit them all over the world. So you can make your bookings, you can find out information, you can transmit information. And so it, it changes. And also you can, you, it, it, we, we can seriously enhance the visitor experience through the use of applications. So we, we know what the Eastern Cape has to offer. It's the birthplace of Nelson Mandela, Albertina Sisulu, and by the way, four of the Ravonia trialists. Yeah. But it's a story to be told. Yeah. So we aren't fully capitalizing on that as many other things. Uh, but you know, you can tell the story and you can hear the story on your phone. 
So, you know, there, there are just a host of applications. You can come and stay at a place and your phone will tell you where the nearest restaurants are and they'll tell you about the restaurants. And, by the way, your navigator is on your phone as well. Exactly. You name it, it's all there. Minister, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the celebrations today and it's always a pleasure seeing you. Thanks so much for being our guest. Thanks, Leanne. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. All right, that's our Minister of Tourism, Derek Honeycomb, talking to us about tourism, South Africa, our position, particularly when it comes to uh, going into the digital world. And wow, it is. I mean, how many times have you seen a photograph of somewhere that someone has posted and you've said, I've got to go there. I've done that on numerous occasions. And believe me, I didn't regret it. All right, we take a break. We'll see you after this. Stay